guys, it's JP Morgan. Today on the Slant Lens, we're here in Iceland. Yes, we're in Iceland. We've been having a wonderful time here the last few days. We're on the Golden Circle, going to several different places here in Iceland. This is a falls, and I'm gonna butcher it, but it's Gullfoss. 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 There you go, Gullfoss. Uh, it's a great falls. I'm gonna shoot some panels here. I shoot always with my 50 millimeter lens. I'm gonna shoot 50 millimeter, and I'm gonna stitch the images together. Uh, I love doing this. I get a nice flat perspective using that 50 millimeter lens. I'm gonna shoot at F16. I'm gonna put six stops of ND on this because I want to drag the shutter and get a just beautiful liquid looking water in the background. So that I've got my new Atlas pack and I'm pretty excited about having with me here in uh, Iceland. I really love these things because basically they are a backpack that's around a camera bag. So you can put all your clothes and things in the back, put your cameras in the inside, I'm sorry, in the front, you can put your cameras, clothes and things on the back. It's pretty amazing. Because space is limited, and especially when I'm walking around during the day, I carry these three filters. They're a medium and a hard three-stop gradated. And so three-stop gradated means I'm gonna go from zero to three stops, but I'm gonna stack those on top of each other. Now I can gradate the sky a little bit, make that darker or lighter, depending, or I can just put them in front of the lens and use it just straight as six stops. That's gonna help me give us beautiful motion in the water down there because I'm gonna try to get myself to at least a quarter of a second, a one fifth of a second, I mean, I just want it as long as possible. I could stack another three-stop ND on here, which wouldn't hurt this at all, but that's gonna give me that beautiful uh, kind of running water, that kind of fluid looking water. So there's a basic setup. I will set my camera on timer. I wanna do a two second timer because I will do shoot these in panel uh, pieces and I don't wanna touch the cameras as I shoot each of these. I've made sure my camera is as level as I possibly can. I find color can become an issue when you're shooting pieces and you're going to stitch them together in Photoshop. So I'm obviously going to shoot this at daylight. It doesn't really matter because I'm shooting that raw. I'm going to go in and raw and using my new, which is super exciting, Datacolor has their spider checker photo. I've been wanting something like this from Datacolor for a long time. Something small I can just set up there in my first frame. You know, when I'm shooting, I can put it in my backpack. It's easy to carry. I just drop it on the tripod so I have it. I can just stick it in on my first shot. Because my camera settings, I have a very long shutter because I want to make the water look really fluid, look really nice. But for this, I'm going to go to 1.4. I'm going to open the lens wide open. I'm going to shorten that shutter so I can hand hold this. I'll hold it out in front so it'll focus on it. I'll get one shot. I'm going to go back to my settings, which I'm going to go back to F16 at four seconds. And I'm going to get my first panel shot. What's nice about this, you've got a color chart and you've also got a black and white gray, uh, gray scale. So you can use either one. I mean, this is nice because you've got an 18% gray swatch there. It's actually a great way to work if you want to get a quick color. But if you want to see the color, you can use the color chart, so you have those two different options. I started something on this trip I haven't done before. I've always put my hand up at the beginning of each panel so that I know that's the beginning. I always put my hand up at the end so I know that's the end. But sometimes I go from one to the other and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start palm up means beginning. Beginning. So I put my palm up, shoot the first frame, then I'll do my four shots, eight shots, whatever number of shots I'm doing. Then I put the back of my hand for end. So beginning, end. That way I know when I go up in bridge, I can see my front of my hand palm is the beginning, back of my hand is end, and that panel between are the shots that go together. So there's my process. I've got six stops of ND in there so I can really let that water blur. My first shot's gonna be the palm of my hand. Then I'm gonna get a shot with my spider checker photo. And then I'm gonna take my panel, whether it's two, four, six, or eight images. And I take the back of my hand to finish it. And that's my bracket. And I'm just gonna shoot away. Okay, we're back from Iceland. We're here in the studio. I want to put my panoramic views together. I shot several of them of Gadafoss, which was a wonderful waterfall. I had my spider checker photo with me all the time, which was easy to put in because it was small. I used the color uh, chart, not the gray. I could have used the gray, but I used the color chart. And so I'm gonna take these images now into uh, Camera Raw and work on them in Camera Raw. Before I started this, I used my Spider X to be able to calibrate the monitor because people get on there and they mess with my monitor. I just wanna make sure that the monitor is calibrated before we start this process. So I'm just gonna take these three images into Camera Raw. I'm gonna open those up in Camera Raw. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sample the color on the 18% gray. And I'm gonna and that just gives me a starting point. I feel like that's fine. 
gives me a starting point. I'll sync these together. A lot of work to be done here. This is a very kind of flat situation, end of the day. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push up my exposure. So I'm gonna bring this up somewhere in there, just so I overall get my exposure up. It's gonna blow out my sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna bring the contrast way up because I really need, I need contrast. So I'm gonna go up almost into the 60s here with contrast, which seems kind of crazy, but it's gonna give me a much nicer, uh, I'm gonna bring that exposure down just a little bit. There we go. All right, highlights. I'm not gonna do much of the highlights. I can maybe bring them up a little bit. I'm gonna definitely open up the shadows. I wanna see into the shadows. I wanna, don't wanna go too far. It starts to feel like an HDR. And I think that's kind of annoying. Whites I'm not gonna bother with. Blacks I'm not gonna bother with. I am going to go in and I'm gonna push the clarity up just a little bit. I'm gonna push this up just about to 27, which is quite a bit. Um, you know, you have to look at it and see what you think. If I did that too much or not, dehaze, I'm gonna definitely do dehaze. Every time you do dehaze, it's gonna darken everything just a little bit, and that's why it's okay for it to be a little bright um, when I put it together. So there's a good starting point. I've got a decent starting point there. But now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna create a mask. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select the sky. And uh, all I'm gonna do with this mask on the sky is I'm gonna just simply take that mask and I'm just gonna bring the exposure of the sky down. If I bring it down too far, it starts to look really fake. So I'm gonna just bring it up where it's just down a little bit and that's gonna give me some nice, nice, I want a little blue in that sky. Um, it's hard, I could play with the color of that sky, but I don't think I'm gonna like it when I do. It's gonna, no, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm keep that where it was. Okay, so now there's my sky, maybe a little bit exposure it down a little bit more on that sky. All right, now the second mask I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a, and I'm gonna just select subject and see what it does. And what does it do? Yeah, it gives me pretty much the falls in the foreground, which is good. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna bring my exposure up. I'm gonna make it a little brighter, and that's okay. I'm gonna fix that here in a second, because I'm gonna bring that contrast up a little bit. I'm gonna minus my highlights a little bit, so they come down just a little bit here. It's getting closer for me now. I'm now gonna close the shadows down, about minus 24. And this is where I'm gonna, I really think it's gonna work here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the blacks way back. And now I start to get just a nice kind of minus 30, I'll go around minus 30. So this applied my settings across these two images with the exception of in this image here, uh, when you look at the mask, I didn't get the, uh, the mask didn't really move over the subject mask. So I had to so select this and I'm gonna just create the, I'm gonna redo the settings that I had on this one. It gives you a, a pretty good job. It, it picked up the sky just fine, but it didn't pick up the subject mask. Sometimes I have to mess with these and just kind of clean them up. And in this case, that was the case. So, so I've selected it now. I'm gonna set these settings to exactly what the other one was. All right, so there's my two images. I'm gonna go ahead and just export these. I'm gonna save them as images. I'm gonna call it Goddard Foss Pano number one, or number two, which I've already done. And I'll export these into Photoshop. All right, I'm gonna go into Photoshop, merge these together. I'll go into File, Automate, and Photo Merge. And I'll look up my images. Got my Goddard Foss two, and I'm gonna do version number three. So I'm liking what I've got here, but I just sometimes want to do just a little bit of adjustment here at the very end. I'm gonna do a curves layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a curves layer on here. And that's gonna give me the ability just to mess with this just a little bit. I'm gonna open it up just a little bit. Push the shadows up a little bit. So it feels a little bit brighter. I feel that, that's kind of nice. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a JPEG just so I have a JPEG to be able to use. I don't know why Photoshop makes me do those two steps to give it a, a JPEG. And there we go, there's my large JPEG.
So that's the process for me. That's how I take and use the spider checker photo to just get me started. It is just a starting point. It gets my color very close. And then from there, I'm gonna work on the image and do a lot of different things. I mean, this one was very extreme because it was such a dark day and it was so, I mean, just so little highlights. But I think got a decent image out of it and it just really helps to be able to have something to get the color in place and to be able to work from there. Let's take a look at some other panoramic views. Here's a panoramic I did with two images. This panoramic I did of the falls with four images. Here's a panoramic I did with six images. See how that populates? It looks beautiful. Okay, so there's how we shoot, stitch, and process uh, landscapes using that uh, photo, uh, spider checker photo as kind of a guide to help us along the way. So, hope you enjoyed this. You keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking.